Hey everybody, my name is Jason Murphy. I'm one of the head nerds here at Enable. Uh, proud to introduce release 24.1. Now we've got five things that we're going to talk about and I'm actually going to go through a demo with you. Here it is. And welcome to the 24.1 release notes video with myself, Jason Murphy. Let's begin. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're going to navigate to configuration and then we're gonna go down to patch management. We've got an exciting piece that we have added in to patch management this month. What we're gonna do is we're going to click into patches and you're gonna see a column where it says CVSS. That is common vulnerability scoring. What we're gonna be able to do here with that is now get a rating on the severity of patch. The good news about this is that you're going to be able to, and at least in a future release, you're gonna be able to do things like auto approve patches based on a score. So if I kind of move this over here and I'll just move myself out of the way, I'll pull myself over there. What I can show you is that you're going to be able to do that even right now. This is the, obviously the manual side of patch management. You come in see the list of patches and then see that, see that CV, CVSS score. The other part here, is we're also going to be introducing much of this into the automatic approvals in a future release. So this part is really exciting because now, based on the criticality of patch, you're going to be able to at least get a better understanding of what to patch and when. Now, the other part here that's really, really cool is that based on the patches that are being addressed by the severity, we can now see exactly what is being addressed by that patch. Now, this is really important because now you can actually come in here, launch into this information, and this will take you to the MSRC, which is an area from Microsoft that's going to be able to allow you to understand more of what that patch and that vulnerability exactly is. So again, a really exciting piece around patch management in Uncentral. Another exciting part of 24.1 is more and more is coming on our REST APIs. Uh, so in 24.1, I'm gonna take you through some of the new changes that we have added in, because like I said in 23.9, um, we will be taking the bulk of this year and creating more and more value around REST APIs. Okay, so first and foremost, if you're familiar with what we did in 23.9, obviously there is things like authentication, API service, and then device tasks. Now, the other part here now is that we can actually ask uh, and central for asset information. So in 24.1, we've added this particular API that will now return asset information based on a list of devices. Okay. The other one we have done is organization units. And while we have things like the service org in Central, customers and sites, we need to be able to pull that information differently because of tenancy and everything else. So what we want to do here is be able to retrieve a list of customers, retrieve, retrieve a list of organization units, being able to retrieve a list of sites so that you can better segment your, your queries the way you need to. And again, we're doing more and more on that. And if you're not familiar with what we did in 23.9, is that we have already added in the scheduled task API, or what I like to call our run script API, where you're gonna be able to programmatically run any of the automation that is already in your central server. So a very handy way to be able to kick off routines um, from other tools or even from your own scripting. Now we've done a couple other enhancements. Uh, specifically uh, for Device Manager for Apple. So let me take you through what those are. So if you go to the All Device View and in Central, as you can tell, there is a Features column where we turn on things like Cove Data Protection, Patch Management. We set up maintenance windows. Well, now we have also added in an Apple column so that you can see exactly what has been turned on for Device Manager for Apple. And if you're not familiar with Device Manager for Apple, that's okay. It will be in the release notes as well, but that is effectively MDM built into and central for uh, Mac and iOS devices. So again, we've added in that column. 
Now, one other thing we have done as well is we have added into an integrator report. You do have to go to a customer level. So I'm gonna go pick on my buddy Joe here. And then I'm going to click into status and then you will see a manage patch for Mac report that you can use to report on whether, you know, your Macs are up to date or if there are patches available. Now, one thing most people aren't familiar with is that if I go into configuration and then I come into schedule tasks, is that in the software repository, there is Mac scripting already built in. Okay, so take a look for what that is. You can see the icon here based on type. So you can come in here and see exactly what is happening for uh, Mac scripting. So let me just go down to the bottom here. Here we go, there's some Mac scripting right here. And again, what you're gonna be able to do is, you know, install patches, all of the things that you would want to do in terms of patch management. And again, the good news is, whether you're using Apple Script or Bash, you're gonna be able to come in and complement your managed services with the scripting and automation that you need. In 23.8, I told you about our enhanced integration for EDR. Effectively, for Sentinel-1, you can run standalone just like you would normally run standalone on its own, but in N Central. So we have done this enhanced integration, and if you are one of our partners that are using one of the legacy integrations, I would encourage you to come into N Central and provision yourself into the modern enhanced integration. And how to do that is simply by coming into integrations, going into integration management. Now, I don't have an upgrade button in my N Central, but you will, uh, providing that you do have an EDR integration that is in that legacy format. Mine says contact enable. Yours will say upgrade. If you click that button and wait about 30 minutes, you will effectively be migrated into that new tenant. You're gonna be able to choose which authentication method you want to use, you know, something like Microsoft Azure AD. Anyways, there's more information on that video. And if you look to the, the comments below on YouTube, you'll be able to see a link where you can actually walk through that entire process. And last but not least, in 24.1 is the release notes. So please come in, review the release notes. I obviously has everything I've gone through already, but one thing I haven't told you about is the 40 plus bug fixes that are also included in 2024.1. And if you go through these, you will see a lot of things that have been addressed within the product since 23.9. So I encourage you obviously to come in and check that out. Okay, so that's 24.1 for you. Um, we have two new uh, REST APIs. We have uh, new Mac features. We have uh, the new patch CVSS scoring, um, as well as a new patch report for Mac. Um, and last but not least, we have the new EDR I integration. So our enhanced integration with EDR, where you can now migrate uh, from standalone. That's it for me. My name is Jason Murphy. Thank you again.